it's just not reasonable to me. This has never happened, as far as I know, in the history of the world where you quarantine, quarantine healthy people. It's certainly not biblical. There is kind of a positive aspect to this. No, you might not that? see it right away. I, I usually do mission trips internationally. Right. I usually go to Africa or Mexico or anywhere but here. Right. But uh, what I'm finding is the the territory is changing. We are we have more people we can reach because more people are seeking now. Mm, that's Parts true. Are changing. That's you know, people are kind of interested in some of those weird ideas we have. It's a matter of how we present them, though. Still with that same loving relationship that we had, but even more so now, because we're to be a walking epistle, right? Read and learned of men, so that they can see Christ in us, and they will desire of us what we have. Amen. I, Obadiah, my, my, our son, uh, did some canvassing this summer, and... Yeah. Uh, he said that the people seemed much more receptive and open to spiritual things. His, his, his uh, sales, even though he had to wear a mask when he was presenting, which you think would have hurt his, his results, uh, the Lord blessed, and he had the best summer he's ever had. Amen. Amen. Yeah, more people are, are more receptive. And if That's it's pushing impact. people both ways. They're either getting way more into it or getting angry and going the other way. So it's really making a divide. People are people are going on both sides. It's it's amazing, but it's good. God knows who needs to hear it. And uh, so it's a good thing. Okay, um, Keith, it's time you can go ahead and get started on yours. Okay, let me share the screen. I'm going to start out with a uh, with a couple of things here because there may be some people that uh, don't know don't know me or haven't heard of the thing some of the things that's uh, that I have done in my life. Let's see here. That's the end. So, in 1982 is when I fell in love with Jesus Christ. It was a long time ago. We had, in my his, in my family, we have a long history. Uh, in fact, some of my relatives, one of my relatives at least, his name was James Bond, actually spoke to Mrs. White in his bio. It talks about that, his son's bio, and uh, C. Lester Bond. And it was Ellen White who convinced him to go to school back and become a physician. So there are certain things in my life that has been embedded my whole life. So in 1982, when I fell in love with Jesus Christ again, I decided, well, I'm going to study prophecy. And I went into uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and uh, where it, the discussion was about the, the temple. And uh, in that discussion, um, Jesus said, But when you shall see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet, standing word ought not, let him that readeth, let him that in Judea flee to the mountains. Well, this was all about the temple and the destruction of the temple. So I said, the abomination of desolation wasn't in sitting in the temple in AD 70. Let's find out more about that. So I went to Daniel 12 where it says uh, that when the data is taken away and the abomination of desolation set up, there shall be 1,290 days between them. And I said, well, the, the desolation, uh, the data wasn't taken away then. This is when I determined that Daniel 12 would have a future application, not the, that the uh, things that occurred there was done away with, but it would be repeated and in that, because the daily was in that, I said also Daniel 8 would be repeated. And I said this time and time again. And I thought I was the only one talking about this. This is in 1982. In the mid-1990s, when I was working in the emergency room, I was a charge nurse in the emergency room at night. 
we didn't have any patients. So I went up on this board and I put uh, all these uh, time proxies up there. And as uh, Clois, as the housekeeper says, Keith, Charles Wheeling talks about that. And I turn around and says, who's Charles Wheeling? I didn't know anybody else was stuck. And that's when I started finding out that other people was talking about this. So that's Daniel 8 and Daniel 12. Well, I have the 12, the uh, 1260 days from 538 to 1798. I have always looked at it thinking that there's a possibility of uh, it being repeated. And that's what, not done away with, but repeated. And so that's what we're going to go through today. We're going to go through that prophecy. And I've set it up in two different sections. As the first, first we will read through it, and we will see this here a few times today. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads, that's all seven heads, the name of blasphemy, not just one head, but all seven heads. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet was the feet of a bear, and his mouth of the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And some of these things we will go over again. And I saw one of its heads as it was wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And his deadly, that's one of the heads, and his deadly wound was healed. And some of the world wondered after the beast? No. And all the world wondered after the beast. And we'll look at that again. And they worshiped the dragon who gave power unto the beast. And they worshiped the beast saying, who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? We will deal with that. Now you not notice there. Let's see. Let's go. And I have some pictures. This if you're a Seventh-day Adventist, you've seen some of these pictures before. And we're one of the some of the things we will be talking about is the difference between the dragon and its beast, because it's the dragon that gave its power to the beast. And we will see what how you how Uriah Smith in the book Daniel and Revelation got around the difference between the dragon and the seven heads, or the dragon and the beast. Because there's a, the beast was given its power to the dragon. It's just like it's just like Wayne was saying, the father gave his son power. They're like the same, but they're two different people. The dragon and the beast are are two different in the bit. Uh, entities. And then we will go down at the fourth verse here. And they, when you look at things, you have to know who they are. See, the, in verse three, it says, and all the world wandered after the beast for, and they worshiped the dragon, who all the world, which gave power unto the beast. The beast gets his power from the dragon. So what the things that we're going to be working with here, there's three things. Seven heads, ten horns, and ten crowns. And we'll be looking at the seven heads. And then we will also be looking at, uh, uh, on in part two, in verse 5 there, and there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue 40 and 2 months. Now, if we go, we're supposed to, uh, Mrs. White tells us we're supposed to compare Daniel and Revelation. So if we go to Daniel, there's some possibilities. There's some possibilities that we can see these same things in Daniel. 
Daniel 7, 12. As concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives was prolonged for a season. Now, prolonged, could that mean healed? I don't know. That's something that time will tell. And then Daniel 8, 24, which you will hear more about in a couple days. And his power shall be mighty. That his, it will be the beast, and his power shall be mighty. But not by his, the beast's own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully and prosper and practice and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. So even though his power is mighty and it's him doing it, the beast doing it, actually it is the dragon through the beast that's doing these things. Now I have uh, three or four more pictures that, through your life. If you've been a Seventh-day Adventist like me, that you may have seen some of these pictures before. I remember when I was a small child, uh, I was um, in meetings, in a tent meetings when JJ Miet was there and given these and I would see these things up on the screen. This is when I was a little child. <laughs> okay, so next we're going to go and uh, let's see here. The head that was what this these here things I believe is from Uriah Smith's book, um, Daniel and Revelation, and I had to read this three or four times the chapter on uh, Revelation 13 to get what he was trying to say because some of the things that he was talking about in his book is not what we teach today. <coughs> the head that was wounded today was the papal head. We are held to this conclusion by the very obvious principle that whatever is spoken of in prophecy of the symbol of the government applies to that government only while it is represented by that symbol. That makes sense. But Rome was pagan in John's day who lived under the six or imperial head. Well, I don't see that. He spreads them out, and I, you know, when you read the prophecy, I didn't get that they were spread out. This shows that us that, let's see, this shows us at once that six of the heads, including the imperial, belong to the dragon. And if it was any one of these heads which was wounded to death, he puts if, you know, like, was it? And we know that uh, they belong to the beast, which is controlled by the dragon. Continuing. Then it was one of the heads of the dragon or one of the forms of government that belonged to Rome in its pagan form and not one of the heads of the beast. Well, I thought it was one of the heads of the beast. See, this is how... We have made these things fit. And John, and he here he goes and tries to correct John. And John should have said, I saw one of the heads of the dragon wounded to death, not of the beast. But he says that it was one of the heads of the beast that was wounded to death. Then it was one of the heads of the dragon or one of the forms of government that belonged to Rome in its pagan forms and not one of the heads of the beast. In other words, this would fall upon some form of government that existed the Roman Empire after its change from paganism to Christianity. And this here is not what I was taught when I was a child. And why? Because I never went and read this book. But after this change, there was but one head, 
and that was the papal. Thus, it is placed beyond controversy that it was none other than the papal head that was wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. You see, he goes from seven heads to one head. Let's see, page 14. Now you see why when I read this, I had to go back and read it two or three times to get it figured out to what he was actually saying here. So let's go to the next, uh, another part of this here. <coughs> let's read Revelation 13, 14. And deceiveth them that dwell upon the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. And saying to them that dwelleth on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword and did live. See, when it was wounded, it even says how it occurred. And you see, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power in the sight of the beast. So who is actually doing this deceiving? It's done with the beast, but actually it's the dragon that's doing, uh, that uh, is causing people to uh, worship it. Now, we've only gotten started with Daniel and Revelation. There's something else in there. Now, see, this is the, and I quote this from the 18... 97 version of Daniel and Revelation, because see, like the great controversy, some of the things in the in Daniel and Revelation has been changed. Strip, stripped of his power, both civil and ecclesiastical, the captive Pope Pius VI died in exile at Valence in France, August 29, 1799. At exile, that's because he was a prisoner. But then Uriah Smith says, but the deadly wound was healed when the papacy was reestablished through with a diminution of its former power by the election of a new pope, March 14, 1800. William Miller, I mean, not William Miller, Uriah Smith puts the papacy being healed in 1800. This here was the first time in this book that I had ever even heard of that, because I have always been told it was 1929. But there's a lot more to this story. Now, here's what Mrs. White says about this book. Instruction has been given me that the important books containing the light that God has given regarding Satan's apostasy in heaven should be given a wide circulation just now, for through them the truth will reach many minds. Patriarchs and prophets, Daniel and the Revelation, and the great controversy are needed now as never before. They should be widely circulated because the truth they emphasize will open many blind eyes. <coughs> many of our people have been blind to the importance of the very books that were most needed. Had, track, had tact and skill been shown in the scale of these books, the Sunday Law movement would not be where it is today. And this is in 1905. It's from the Review and Herald. Now let's go and uh, let's read another verse. Let's see here. 13, verse 4. Who is able to make war with them? And I have, that's part of this here whole thing of the, you know, the 1200 or the 42 months, who is able to make war with him? And I'm just go and look at who is a possibility that's going to be making war with this beast. In Revelation 14, 1, and I looked and lo, a lamb stood in the, on the Mount Zion. And with him, 144,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads. So we have the lamb and the 144,000. 
You think if you're among the 144,000, you're alone? No, the lamb, which is Jesus Christ, is right by your side. You always have to remember that. Verse 15, and another angel came out of the temple, came out of the temple in heaven. See, this angel was in this temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud. Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time has come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. Why is the harvest ripe? Because everybody, the whole earth sees everything that's going on. That's why it's right for them to receive Jesus Christ. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in a sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. Now, is that who is able, is that what it means up there? Who is able to make war with him? I don't know. But it's just one of those things that we need to be aware of. Continuing on, looking at uh, Clinton this morning was talking about uh, attitude, which uh, an attitude for me is a is an opening up of your character or a, rev a revealing of your character. And this shows his character here. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. His name, his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. Now, let's see here. So, let's go, and now let's look at this here. Revelation and Daniel are the same. Blast, and I open up his mouth, and I'm going to repeat this. In blasphemy against God, to blasphemy his name and his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. So in Daniel 8, 13, see, the Seventh-day Adventist, we always quote Daniel 8, 14. We, for some reason, don't want to include the question. And we're going into this more when I talk about Daniel 8 in a couple of days. Then I heard one saint speaking and another saint said unto that certain saint which spake, How long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice, the transgression of dailies, to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot? There again, the tabernacle and those that dwell in heaven. You see, Daniel and Revelation has the same things occurring. It's just you have to go and look for them. See here. Now we're going to go into part two <coughs> of this. Because it comes, I split it up in like two parts. And it's a second part that I really decided that this is going to be repeated. And I saw one of its heads as it was wounded to death, and his, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wandered after the beast. And they worshiped the dragon. They worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast who is made, able to make war with him? And there, and the next verse says, And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemy. And we talked about it in Daniel 8 also. And power was given unto him to continue 42 months. <clears throat> now we're going to have to look at this because this word continue if you go to our historical application of this it has been removed so we're going to go and we're going to look at the definition next of continue the boat continued downstream in other words when it was upstream happened first and then a downstream the tradition continues to this day. In other words, continue. the tradition was before, and it still is continuing today. <coughs> and then we'll continue after lunch. To give you the, the thing that continue connects two things together. So let's go back and look at this with just verse uh, 5 again. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies and power 
was given unto him to continue 42 months. So in verse 1, it says, one of his heads the, the day, uh, was wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and then it was allowed to continue 42 months. So see, the 42 months should come after the deadly wound was wounded and healed. We don't teach that at all. And you see, here's what here's what we uh, here's what we I have always learned. 538 A.D. was the start of the papal power. 1798, the beast was wounded. Whoops, here. 1929, it was healed. And I said, I remember in a Sabbath school in Fresno one time, I raised my hand and says, well, I wasn't really healed, E.D., in 1929, but that's when the healing started. Because it's like today, it's a lot more powerful than it was in 1929. So here's, you'll, uh, you'll see this again at the end, down at the bottom here. One head wounded, no idea when. One head healed, no idea when. Then that beast or that head will continue 42 months or 1260 days. Don't have any idea when, don't idea what it will cause it, don't know the results. At the end of 42 months, what happens? Does it just go bye-bye? Is the wounded, is it, is it dead? It doesn't really say, it just says it continued 42 months. See, one of those things that when you learn some of these things in prophecy, you look at it and looked at it and looked at it, then it raises more questions. And you see, when you come up here, 538 to 1798, where's the word continue there? It's been removed. Okay, let's uh, do an, another comparison. And I like to do comparisons between these two, uh, these two books. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given to him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. This is because all the world was wondering after him at this time. Daniel 8, 24 and 25. And his power shall be mighty, not by his own power. Remember, we've seen that in Revelation. But it's the dragon's power. And he shall destroy wonderfully and shall prosper and practice and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. See, it's the people they're making war with in, in Revelation. And here, it's the holy people, Daniel 8, 24 and 25. And through his policy, he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. It even says how. It's through his policy. Prosper in his hand. And he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace he shall destroy many. And in Daniel 11, 30 in there, it says, by flatteries. And by peace he shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. See here, he's going against the people and Jesus. And this is in Daniel. So Daniel and Revelation go right hand in hand together. And now look. <coughs> and he opened his mouth and in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and all those that dwell in heaven, all three of them. And then in Daniel 8.25, it says, and through his policy, which we've just read, let's go and read and shall also stand up against the prince of princes. So there is going against Jesus and God, and there is going against directly against Jesus Christ, Daniel and Revelation. It's in both of those chapters. I'm looking at my notes also here, because there's things that I don't want to get left out. 
Revelation 13, 3. And I saw one of his heads as it was wounded to death, and his wood and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. And you see, in 1798, I have a question. Did the United States of America wonder after the beast? Did they go and worship the beast? No, they did not. It was one of the nations that was against them. In fact, that's one of the reasons why this nation was set up. And see, when it, it, when it is repeated, it will be all nations. Everybody will be wondering after the beast. And then we find, and there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things, and blasphemy and power was given unto him to continue 42 months. And now we're going to see what Mrs. White says about this prophecy. And this is basically what we have been, I have been told my whole life. Power was given unto him to continue 42 months. And says the prophet, I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. And again, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. And that's what happened in 1798. This is true. He that killeth with the sword must be killed by the sword. The 40 and two months are the same as a time and times and dividing at times three years and a half or 1260 days of Daniel 7. The time which the papal power was to oppress God's people. This power, as stated in preceding chapters, began with the supremacy of the papacy in AD 538 and terminated in 1798. At that time, the Pope was made captive by the French army. The papal power received its deadly wound, and the prediction was fulfilled. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Now, <coughs> I've been told this my whole life. And I ask you, have you ever went and did research on this? If Joy is watching... Joy came over, and her and Abel and Abel's wife came over to my house a month or so ago, and I copied some of her DVDs, and one of them was by Vern Bates, and I went and ordered some books, and one of the books that we're going to be talking about, I don't see it here, but it's a book that we're going to be quoting from pretty soon. It is the bibliography of Napoleon. And there's a lot more to this story than we know. And this, but first, this is from Wikipedia under Napoleon and the Catholic Church. Upon his refusal, upon his refusal, he was taken prisoner and on February 20th was escorted from the Vatican to Santa, and then to, well, it goes to those places there. The French declaration of war against Tuscany led to his removal. Now I'm going to go down a little bit. The chief town of Drome, where he died six weeks after his arrival on August 29, 1799. Having then reigned longer than any pope, Pius VI's body was then embalmed but was not buried until January 30, 1800, after Napoleon saw political advantage to burying the deceased Pope in efforts to bring the Catholic Church back into France. And the way I have taught, been taught, it would be the efforts to bring the wounded Catholic Church bandit back into France. So see this arrest was not to do away with the Pope or the Vatican. It was to control the Catholic Church. That I was never told when I was young either. Continuing, Napoleon realized the importance of religion as a means to increase obedience. Haven't we heard about obedience? Wear those masks. Self-isolate, all that stuff. And complete, complete, increase obedience and its control over French. 
It was not until the conclave of cardinals had gathered to elect a new pope that Napoleon decided to bury Pope Pius VI, who had died several weeks earlier. He gave him a gaudy ceremony and in an effort to gain the attention of the Catholic Church. This eventually led to the Concord of 1801. Why did they need a Concord if the, if the Catholic Church was wounded? The Concord of 1801 negotiated by that guy, the Pope's Secretary of State, which was not, apparently was not in prison. Well, in 1801, we have a new Pope, so he's back in the Vatican. The Pope's Secretary of State, which resystemized the linkage between the French Church and Rome. Continuing, the Car Concord of 1801 is a reflection of an agreement between Napoleon or uh, Napoleon and Pope Pius VII that reaffirmed the Roman Catholic Church as the majority church of France and restored some of its civil status. 1801, well, I thought it, it was completely wounded until 1929. We haven't even got to that. You'll learn some more. While the Con Concord restored some ties to the papacy, it was largely in favor of the state. The balance of church-state relations had tilted firmly in Napoleon's favor. As part of the Concord, he presented another set of laws called the Organic Articles. Well, the, if he uh, need, why did they need some of these more articles if they're wounded completely until 1929, which is what I was led to believe. Now, the book that I got is the bibliography, which uh, Mr. Bates spoke about, of Napoleon by Lockhart, and it's in 1897. So I says, you know what? I need to get this book. So I sent off, and this is a picture I took of this book. And in the, in the front of it, some guy by the name of Charles got it from Elon, October 1914. So this book is a very old book. Now we're going to read some of this book. <coughs> and you're going to see some other things. I titled this After the Wounding. But when he went to demand that his holiness should take an active part in a war against England, he was met by a steady refusal. Irritated by his opposition and perhaps still more by his suspicion that the patriots of the Spanish uh, Peninsula received secret support from the Vatican, uh, he did not hesitate to issue a decree in the following words, whereas the temporal sovereign of Rome has refused to make war against England and the interest of the two kingdoms of Italy and Naples out out not to be intercepted by a hostile power. See, this here was after 1800. And here he referred to them, the temporal sovereign of Rome. Now, is he just trying to get on his good side? Don't know. But you see, still, he wanted to control them. This is continuing, which formed the Holy City. He was from the good, from the good of Christianity, not for that, of the enemies of our holy re religion, which therefore decree that the Duchess of those people be forever united to the kingdom of Italy. The seaports of the papal territory was forthwith occupied by French troops, but Pius remained for some time in undisturbed possession of Rome itself. And you see, this is after 1800. Now will a general Milus therefore took military possession of Rome on February 1809. The Pope, however, still remaining in the Vatican and attended there as usual 
by his own guards. So even though we have them wounded, they're still operating there. But it's here that one of uh, Napoleon's generals uh, went in and took possession of, of, uh, of Rome. <coughs> Continuing, this is in 1809. On the 17th of May, Napoleon issued from Vienna his final decree declaring the temporal sovereignty of the Pope to be wholly at an end. So I thought it was 1798. Incorporating Rome with the French Empire and declaring it to be the, his second city, setting a pension on the Holy Father in a spiritual capacity. Well, we're going to put him on welfare and appointing a committee of administration for the civil government of Rome. The Pope, on receiving the partisan that thing, ratifying this imperial rescript, instantly accumulated a bull of excommunication against Napoleon. See, they got this war going. This is after 1809. Mullus, on pretense that a life sacred in the eyes of all Christians might be endangered, arrested Pius in his palace at midnight and forthwith dispatched him under a strong escort to Savona. And there's, they go into quite extensively what happened to him after that. He made, therefore, many efforts to procure from the Pope some formal re, uh, relinquishment of his temporal claims, but Pius VII remained unshaken, and the negotiation at length terminated in the removal of His Holiness to that place, where he continued a prisoner, through, though treated personally with respect, even though mag magnificent during more than three years. See, this stuff happened in 1808-1809. I had never heard of any of this. You can also find out some of this uh, on Wikipedia. Let's see, 42. And there's a, somebody put a picture of, you know, a representation of his arrest. <coughs> On February 2, 1808, Rome was occupied by French troops. And on April 2, 1808, Napoleon decreed that the papal territories of, we'll go through those papal territories, were part, irrevocably part of my kingdom in Italy. And finally, in the following year, May 1809, Napoleon published the decree annexing Rome to the great empire. With the Pontus lands now seized, with the Pontus lands now seized. This was in 1809. All that was left for the Holy Father was his spiritual domain and his palaces. Initially the Pornal of, and then Potiphal palaces, into the latter of which the Pope finally retreated. And this here is from Napoleon and the Pope from the Con Condordat to the excommunication from napoleon.com. So, I believe, let's go down here and read what it's, this here actually says, and I saw one of its heads as it was wounded to death, and its deadly wound was healed, and all the world wandered the, out after the beast, and that includes the United States. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things. That's the beast. And blasphemies and power was given unto him. And that's the dragon that gave him the power to continue 40 and two months. So when this is repeated, here's what I believe is a possibility. Won't know until then. One head is wounded. One head is healed. And that may be more than that. It is to continue 
42 months, 1260 days. No idea what the ending of it will be. Now, now as one of his heads, if, some, if somebody wants to know how that can be explained, let's look at the United States of America. The United States of America has 50 states. All those states are as one. But United States also has territories. Territories could be considered one of those heads. Those are the Virgin Islands, Guam, Samoa. There is, I think there's six or seven of them. And, um, And I saw one of his heads was wounded to death and a deadly one was healed and all the world wondered after the base. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies and power was given unto him to continue 42 months. See, the 42 months has to come after the wound and the healing in the future application. And there is one of the, from a screenshot from one of the pictures that I have done from Africa Safari Live, it's a program that I watch all the time, not all the time, it's on weekends. And I have over 200 screenshots from it. And I hope that nobody gets upset, nobody gets confused about what happens or anything like that. Joy bow our heads for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day of tabernacles that you have provided for us. One of those days that in Genesis you said you call seasons one of these moeds, these appointed days that you have assigned to meet with us. Thank you so much for providing this opportunity to meet with you once again. In your name, amen. Thank you. And you see, Sandy, I've only just started this. Do what? It's a lot of interesting stuff to go back and read and study. You don't know all that's there. Yeah. I never knew it either. That was really good. And you see, this is why in the eight, when I went through the 18, uh, through the 1919 Bible conference, when people was talking about these things, I had no idea. Hello, Violet, I see you on there. Keith, I have also uh, suspected from my study of scriptures that there will be an end time fulfillment of the 1260 prophecy on a day day in you know day i believe day for a year finished in 1844 but i yes. i there's i think there's evidence that that, that there can be a, a secondary end time fulfillment on a day for day basis of some of these prophecies especially i mean the 1260 occurs so many times i think yeah. revelation 12 has some evidence that there's an end time application as well there's three and that's, where, that's where my study started back in 1982 when I determined that Daniel 12 has an end time application because in the destruction of, of the Jerusalem, not everything was met. Exactly. Sandy, didn't your father believe this too? Or I, I thought, I, I can't remember. Did he think there could be an end time? He feels like there's possibly a Sunday law with three and a half years after. Yes, that that was my that's that's what my thoughts have are. People feel that. So you that can't set a date for Sunday law, but no. Nope. See, I, I stay completely away from the dates, but you know, yeah. no idea when that Sunday. We look for events. The National Sunday Law is one of those events, right? Daddy said, if you study it, and when it happens, you'll know where you are. Exactly. Right. So we can put a date there, but when that happens, we'll kind of get an idea. And by then, I feel that the church, for the most part, will be the church will be um, sealed one way or the other. 
I heard uh, somebody put it this way. If, if, you know, we're told that the time of trouble is going to be greater than there ever was since there was a nation. And if you were told, okay, you're going to, you're going to be suffering, but I can't tell you how long it's going to be. It could go on for, for years and years and years. That would be a lot more difficult than if you know, okay, this is going to be rough, but it's only going to last for three and a half years. Right. And it won't, it won't start out bad. It will for some, That's but right. it won't be until the end. And then at the very end, when those bad things happen, it won't happen to the righteous. That's right. We'll be protected after uh, the close of probation. From just, the and it, it might be kind of scary, but to me, if you can really believe that, it's exciting because when it happens, it's going to be scary. There's going to be things you're worried about your family, worried about a lot of things, but you know the end is there and you just lean on him and pray and just keep going because it's about there and Look how fast times are going. I mean, my grandson was just born and he's already 19 months. I mean, it just goes fast. Yes. Oh. Well, now is the time to make our calling and election sure, because we're told if we wait until the Sunday law comes along as Adventists, it's going to be too late. And there are some that say that when that happens, uh, Jesus stands up and comes. I don't see that. No, no, no. No, the world still has to have the opportunity to hear and choose. That's right. But there are some that don't believe in it that way. But you just keep studying it. It's all good. And I don't see Solomon on here yet. Fine. We gave him time. Well, he still has... 10 more minutes, right? Yeah, he, he, he said he was going to send me his... Um um powerpoint as well but i haven't seen it yet so after we stopped yesterday i got my email from him <laughs> same so i got two you know so yeah you know, <laughs> we we just booking flights uh later in the year to go to a wedding diana and myself um my uh, sister-in-law's daughter is getting married oh, nice. and, uh, yeah so it's the first time we're going to put our our noses basically out of out of town type of thing apart from the weekend we went away we only went away we were supposed to go for three nights and then after the second night we decided we were so homesick we came home <laughs> uh, i've got some good news to share with you all i don't know how many if i mentioned this before or not but my daughter uh graduated this last spring from southern adventist uh, university with her nurse bs in nursing sure First time she tried to pass her board, she failed, and she took her test again uh, yesterday. And and uh, she, we're we're pretty confident she passed because there's a little trick. They don't tell you how you did right away, but uh, the last time she used this trick, you try to register for the test again, and if it lets you register, you know you failed. Uh, but if oh, it wow. says you can't register, you 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 pass. And it wouldn't let uh, her re-register. It says an application is already in process. Uh, so it's, so it was online. She did a test online. Oh yeah, it's all done. Yeah, it's yeah, all done online. Yeah. So we're just rejoicing and praising the Lord that. Amen. Because this was Amen. a lot of people were praying that she would be able to pass this time. Well, if she went through the end of the test, that means she passed because otherwise it would cut it off. Right. Yeah. yeah. It took. It took. Test. It took five hours. She said it was. Yo yo yo. Randy, I see you're on. It's Pastor Randy there. I see his little black box. <laughs> Door number. Let's try. Let's try. Uh, we're going to be heading over to our to be with our, our people here in Indiana. Is it all right if I give everybody greetings from Bible Explorations? Of course you can. Okay. We'll talk to you <laughs> later. All righty. Bye. Bye. Thank you. And I see Pat from, is it Lagos? Lagos? Are you one of them from Nigeria? Nobody's talking. Silence. I like boxes. I want faces. Yeah, where's the faces? I, I need to, I need to, I need to, sp to speak some words uh, or, or some tongues to 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 Solomon quickly. So just excuse me, I need to mute for that.
Um, Elaine's on here twice. She duplicated herself. Randy. Hi, Sandy. I'm here, but I didn't think everyone wants to see me walking around my house doing stuff. So that's why I keep my camera off. Okay. I'm on here twice because I we had to go somewhere. So I'm watching in the car. And then when I get back, I watch at the house. Okay. <laughs> oh. That's all right. Uh, Sandy? Yes. So, so I said to him, the bulldog of BET, we will be biting him if he's not there in two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's my pet name for you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I must tell you one thing. Um, I've got a real respect for Sandy, okay? That, that little person has got a lot of status and I'm very scared of her. She could have been a bouncer in a different life. <laughs> And Melissa, how is the family there? I haven't seen anybody else. I saw your son at uh, the edge of him. Yeah, yes, we'll Sarah's in the room too, doing some stuff. So the dog's taking a nap. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Husband's at work. And my son-in-law was here earlier. I don't know where he is now. In the back, I guess. Well, his mom's on here. Yeah. Is Terry there or is he working? He's working. Sam nosy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and how far away do you live from Albuquerque? About 40 minute drive. No, 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 no. 45, nope. 45 minutes is to Rio Rancho. Oh yeah, more or like an hour. Hour and a half to Albuquerque. Oh, yeah, is about it? an hour, hour, hour and a half to Albuquerque. Where's Albuquerque? The middle of New Mexico. Yeah. It's off of, I go through 40 and I go through Albuquerque, but I don't know if you're far from there or if you're up and you're along 40 or if you're far in or oh. out. You take 25 north for quite a ways and then you head west. That's like you're going to Colorado. Kind of, yeah. Oh. Okay. Huh. Okay, so, Ooh, so that's I'm, before you get to Santa Fe, though. I, I just need to do a quick Google to see where that is. It's, what is it, three states I, over? My sister's in Colorado Springs, but right now she's down in Alabama. She's a nurse, a traveling nurse, so she's down there, and it's, if I go on 40 and go down, you know, I can drop down and maybe see her on my way and go keep going, but I don't know. There's Solomon. It says right. Albuquerque has got an international airport as well. So it must be Albuquerque, New Mexico, United States. Okay. In Albuquerque, right out of Albuquerque is Corrales. And that's where Sandia View is. That's where I went to Academy for three years. Okay. So hello, Solomon. Hi, Solomon. He's parking outside. He'll be in in He's a minute. He's parking outside. <laughs> I heard his engine. Roaring. <laughs> He's He's engine engine. How were you? That was his private that was his private jet. Yeah, there yes. you go. Yeah. He's one of those politicians we were talking about the other evening. That's <laughs> why he knew about the fleets of jets. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Sorry guys, I've got a I've got a sense of humor, so I just I like to pull people's legs, so please forgive me. <laughs> Absolutely. Hello everybody. Hello. Yes, indeed. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I am now about to uh, share my slides with you so that we can okay. go ahead. You know what? I didn't, I didn't stop it. Hold on just a minute. Let me go fix mine and you can start. Give me just a couple okay, minutes. Okay, yes. All right. Not a problem. Hein was Hi, Dave. Hi, Chris. Hi, Hein. Hi, Violet and everybody. Hello, Solomon. Good afternoon. Yes, indeed. Um, let's see. All right. It was indeed a very busy day, and um, but God has blessed us with life.